and recording. Okay. Great. Wearing my glasses too. Okay. How are you? I'm pretty well. Better. Great. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for the invitation. I mean, we were so many years friends. Yes. I still remember your uh, wonderful hospitality uh, back in, I think it was 2013, right? 2013, yeah. yes, yes, 2013. Yeah, well, it was very nice, yeah. Okay, first time I saw you, it was in uh, the Congress uh, in Romania. You talked first about root membrane technique, <laughs> socket shield, yeah. It was great. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another session of Implant Diary. And uh, we have a special guest, Dr. Miltiadis Mitsias from Greece. Uh, no need to introduce him, but for uh, some of you maybe don't know him, I will introduce uh, a little bit. Dr. Miltiadis was born in 1975. He graduated from the National and Capodistrian University of Athens, obtaining his dental degree in 2000. By 2004, he completed the two-year advanced study program in implant dentistry and a one-year clinical assistant fellowship at New York University College of Dentistry. And uh, he completed a master program in the Department of Biomaterials and Biomechanics. Dr. Metzias lectures, uh, oh, and also fellowship at New York University College of Dentistry. He completed a master program in the Department of Biomaterials and Biomechanics and uh, lectures internationally in many countries, USA, Germany, Korea, Australia, Turkey, Cyprus, Thailand, Iran, Lebanon, Russia, Kenya, Australia, uh, Uganda, Netherlands, Japan, Taiwan, Spain, India, and local in Greece. He has published more than 17 uh, sci reviews and scientific, <laughs> scientific <laughs> articles from 2005 to 2013, and instructor in the Department of Prosthodontics in the University of Athens as well. And uh, research associate in the University of Kiel, Germany where he completed his PhD there. Also, Dr. Metzias was appointed as adjunct faculty in the Ashman Department of Periodontology and Implant Dentistry at NYU Dentistry, and uh, where he still teaches implantology there. He's also a diplomat of ICI, and finally, he is the owner and director of the private dental clinic at Athens dentalcenter.eu. Welcome. Dr. Miltiadis. Thank you so much, Major. Very happy to be here with you. It's a How pleasure for me to be with you and with, you, uh, with my, our participants in this session. Thank you very much for accepting my uh, invitation. Uh, okay, let us hear from you. Uh, well, our friendship uh, comes along, you know, uh, eight years now, since 2012, uh, we first met and I had the honors to, to I was your guest in, um, Te in Tehran, and we had a really, really nice uh, time. I still remember this, and I uh, thank you again for your hospitality back then. Well, a lot of things have changed since that time. I see you moved on also now, uh, Canada, and um, I'm sure you're doing much better. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, I moved here and uh, yeah, in very tough situations. I think in this uh, situations, we have so much time to think about many things, about our lifestyle, of our economic practice, everything. What do you think, Miltiadis, about this situation and this crisis and uh, opening the practice, the protocols, 
What do you think about this? Well, a lot of things. I think that anybody can say anything. Is it good side, bad side, upside, or, you know, it's really on, on the point of view that you see things. I think that, um, first of all, I'm really, really sad for the people that they died. Exactly. And I mean, this, this loss is unbelievable, and the number is huge. And um, I'm, I'm very sorry for, for the families also. On the other hand, um, you know, the bad side is the financial, also the, the crisis and everything for, for everyone, for, for all the countries, inflation, you know, but unemployment will increase a lot. But on the other hand, I think that um, there is a, um, a big gift, let's say here, that uh, this um, COVID story um, brought up to, to the surface the um, more, let's say, the human aspects of life that, you know, we, we sometimes we tend to forget. Sometimes we tend to forget and become more and more materialistic and, uh, you know, all about the money and things like that. So, for example, for me that I spent uh, um, two months and one week inside the house with my kids was unbelievable. I had to do this for years, you know, uh, morning, afternoon, evening with the kids going outside cycling or whatever, or, you know, um, it, it was really awesome. Also uh, with my wife that uh, we, we spent a lot of uh, productive time. And I think also that this, uh, this was a, a real crash test for every family. So I think there were good things and bad things like, like in everything that happens in this life. Um, but for me, the, the, the most tragic was in the, the people that, that we lost. Now, exactly. there is also a big lesson for, for, for everyone for, for this um, COVID-19 story, that um, maybe we should be more careful and we should be, you know, take other measures in our social life, but also in our, uh, uh, you know, us that we are the dentists. So, and we should um, follow even more strict uh, rules. Um, what do you think about this? Yeah, there is so sad that uh, in this situation that many of us confined to our home, to our different way of uh, life sort, uh, lifestyle and experiencing, experiencing something different. And uh, yes, time of sorrow and so sad for the, uh, the loss, the dead people. And, but there is also good in it about uh, when you see how much people helping each other for recovering people, for uh, healing people, it's also good. But yes, I am completely agree with you about that. That sorrow and sadness, uh, especially in uh, economic situations, to start apart from the dead people or uh, dying people, uh, the economic situations becomes uh, worse, and also uh, coming. Not it, it. It doesn't stop. Yeah. So it's so sad, but also. Uh, we have time to think about ourselves, about the strangers inside us, to who I am, who really I am, who, who I am really passionate about for everything. My life, my lifestyle, my work, my practice, way of thinking, everything change and, and continue. This change is continue. Uh, we can we can sense it very much. Yeah, uh, in Canada we we had a lockdown, but no, it's getting to a, another, going to a, another kind of normal, different kind of normal. Never we never uh, faced with a normal position that we previously experienced. This is very different in every aspect of life. Yeah. I don't know. To, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know how much we're going to go back or not. I mean, 
nobody knows. Nobody knows because if, if this thing goes away and they found the vaccine and everything, why not going back to the same story? Maybe we, sh- we will be, you know, more careful or take more measures, but a lot of things are missing right now for the past. Even for us, the way we're working with the patients, the, the speed, um, sometimes even, you know, the, the quality of the industry, I don't know if it's the same, because sometimes we cannot see like before. You know, the, the, the loops, they don't go well uh, with this um, FFP3 mask that, that uh, we, we are wearing, oh, I have it here. So I, I'm like this. So, <laughs> so how can I work really, you know, with this? But anyway, human beings are unbelievable and we adjust in everything. So we'll see. No, nobody yeah. can really say what's going to happen in the, in, the, in the future. I think every country goes week by week. Exactly. And every country, maybe every province should do their own uh, uh, protocols for that after that, because the, the globalization is uh, downgrading, downgrading, and uh, the localization is uprising. Every, situ- every province should do their own protocols. Mm-hmm. Different countries have different ex- experiences. Yeah, we don't know so much about the virus, about the protocols, maybe some kind of try and error. Yeah. Very true. I mean, Greece, for example, took the measures very early, and this is why we had so few deaths. And this is a record, you know, for, for, for Greece. And also, it turned out very successfully for our, our new prime minister, and, you know, politically speaking, let's say, nobody, nobody was expecting something like this, because this was a huge success. And now the, the country goes to normality. Where, on the other hand, you see other countries, huge countries with a lot of, you know, financially much better than us, for example. And you see that they did terrible, yes. terrible with, with the political decisions that they took and the way they handled this crisis. This was unbelievable. I, I, I could not believe that, you know, a prime minister or a president of a country would, would take these decisions. Even exactly. now we see this every day. Even now we see this every day. It's unbelievable. I, I mean... I cannot, I, I, I cannot put it inside my mind. Yeah, maybe because of their ego. <laughs> maybe, but you know, yeah, when you're yeah. in a position like this, yes, there should be no ego. This is, you know, yeah, for the people. You're from, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't understand, especially U.S. or very rich countries. Yeah, it's great Britain too. I mean, you see also in Scandinavia how different the, the um, Sweden. Exactly. And next to them, Norway, totally different thing. So I don't know what, what's good or, or, or not, but for me, at least what we did here, it was a big success. And that's right now we're working here and, you know, everything is fine. I think that from next Monday, they will open also the, the restaurants. Mm-hmm. How many new cases in Athens now? Today we had uh, 10 new. Oh. Or eight, something like this. And yesterday we had only one. So in in total, the country is 11 million. Mm -hmm. And we had 165 deaths, I think, something like this. Mm -hmm. Only. Great. Do you agree with that? Sweden protocols from the first place? No, because they, they took it very light and I don't think that it's working like this. The social distancing is a, it's a, what should have been done in, in every country. Yeah, but at the end, the results are kind of same with, for example, with Germany. At the end, you know what I mean? Yes, but, you know, Everybody says that social distancing works. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as a matter of not to lose lives and, uh, you know, not, not to have the, 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 the virus transferred from the one to, to the other person, but it doesn't work financially. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. So th that's a, a, a different thing that you, you're taking us but in consideration. But for me, the human life is priceless. So the rest, you know. Yeah, I know. Exactly. And different cultures approach to these situations differently. Yes. Yeah, yes, based on their cultures and the level of trusting their governments. Mm -hmm. Very different. Okay, so, uh, um, Miltiadis, do you have any special protocols for your office, for your practice? Uh, uh, regarding the virus, you mean? Uh, regarding the safety of your, your team and patients, any yes, specific yes. protocols? We, we, first of all, we, we change uh, uh, everything. You place the glass in front of the reception, for example, that, you know, it's looking like a bus station that you have to take it, take it, <laughs> something like this. Now, which I hate, for example, because it changes all the, the minimal philosophy that we have inside this boutique type of dental clinic that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, uh, we changed even the filters in the air condition. You know, we, we went to uh, active um, 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 uh, a different type of filters, for, for uh -huh. example. Um, then we, we, we change all the protocols. We're taking the temperature when somebody comes inside. We give them for the shoes. Then uh, we, we, we change in, in every patient, you know, one use uh, um, um, wearables on top of the scrubs and everything that we, we are wearing. Mm -hmm. um, we're having uh, two type of uh, protocols. Either we're wearing the FFP2 mask with a valve and then a surgical mask on top and then the, the shield. Um, or we're going with um, an FFP3 mask like the one I, I showed you before uh -huh. and uh, with the loops. So um, it, depending on, on the case, you know, depending yeah. also on the, on the spray that we have depending on what we're going to do and the procedures that we will follow. Um, okay. To be honest, none of them is comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> none of the, of, of, of the mask, you know, combination is comfortable. And uh, also, you're getting hot. I mean, uh, last week here, we had uh, like 38 degrees Celsius. Oh. And, you know, with all of this, even the air conditions, when you're getting too hot. So this gets you frustrated, you know. Yes, especially with that astronaut gone. Do you comfortable with that? Can you do the surgery with that? For some reason, the FFP3 mask works better for me. Uh -huh. Maybe I have a big nose. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, gone. about the cover, what about that astronaut? You comfortable with it? Uh, so far, I have no problem. Uh huh. To, to be honest, uh, I don't wear it all the times. I wear the, the, the suit that comes up to here, uh -huh. then I close it, and then, then uh, the, the, the okay. head or things like that. But it really depends on the case. Mm -hmm. And also, we have also the, the machines that uh, the vacuum, the extra vacuum machines with the you know, um, um, cone that uh, sucks everything. Now, we will have also from Isaac. The new uh, invention of him that's coming to, to place it here, the new vacuum or something, I don't know how they call it. So we'll see. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, is, uh what's your hobby? Is it different from before this crisis and after that when you <laughs> think about these things? Any change about your lifestyle? No, on the contrary, you know, this, uh, I'm a marathon runner. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I, I, yeah, I, I knew that. Okay, okay. So, um, um, this uh, two-month period, actually, I, I did a lot of running. Mm. And um, I, I really enjoyed it, and uh, my, my speed became better. Right. And um, I slept more, because mm -hmm. usually... My, I don't sleep a lot on this. My major complaint that I don't sleep a lot. But now I slept, uh, you know, enough, and uh, I enjoyed breakfast with the kids. 
And then, you know, I was, um, they, they were starting their webinars and then I, I could go and uh, run. I'm, I'm very privileged because I live in a nice area that um, there is um, um, security and I can run on the streets there. So I don't have to go to a stadium, even though the stadiums were closed now. So I don't have to go to a stadium, I can run there. So I have my 10 kilometer um, circle that I do all the time. So depending right. on the schedule I have, I do it once, twice, three times, you know, depending on the mood also. Okay, so it was a good for self-development. Yeah. Yes, yes. Actually, today, today morning, I did my personal best in five kilometers. Okay. I'm very happy and proud of that. Yeah. Great, great. Also, uh, apart from that uh, disaster and sorrow and sadness, this was good time for self-development and also from dentistry point of view, we have more time for, for every patient, for better diagnosis, for better treatment planning, for better doing surgery, everything is better now. Do I agree? We have more time to do that. I'm not sure about this because uh -huh. if, if because you if if you want to produce the same that you were producing before, it means that you need to work more hours mm -hmm. because you need to sterilize and you have to leave thirty to forty minutes in between patients. It's not like before that you could very easily finish with the one and in five ten minutes place the other one. Now you have to wait forty minutes, which mm -hmm. means that if you were working eight hours now if you want to produce the same you need to work 10 hours uh-huh yeah so true. um and also with all of these masks that you, you wear your speed has gone uh yeah. you know you're not as fast as before mm -hmm. um but and also in the current period um because um a lot of our patients have been you know withdrawn back because for two months we couldn't do anything. Our clinic was closed. Mm -hmm. um, so all of these people want to come and, you know, proceed or progress or finish yeah. with their case. So uh, it, it's a congestion and we're working more hours. Um, I cannot speed up more. Uh -huh. okay. um, because I will lose my focus on my quality of service. So. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing that I was doing is just I have to work more hours. Okay, yeah, that's that's an idea. Yeah, that's it. okay. Uh, let's back to root membrane. Yeah, <laughs> everybody knows you for root membrane technique. Uh, tell me about the first place you started working about this technique you're interested in when you're interested in and you work with that you started to work in this field i'll tell you first of all i'm famous for this but i'm not the one who invented it. i'm the one who developed it now um uh, the technique was invented by dr sherbas constantin um yeah. and uh, he's from uh, city of larissa here in greece and I first saw it from him in um, 2006. Mm -hmm. But uh, the real first case uh, happened uh, the late 2005. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, when I, I came back from the US to Greece, I went to his clinic because he invited me to, to see. And he, he told me, let me show you something. So. Uh, you know, if, if you close your eyes and you, you remember 2006, it was a period that was all about bios grafting and the Gore-Tex membranes and titanium reinforced and things like that. Yeah. So having for me a person telling me, look, I'm drilling inside the, the, the root of the tooth and, you know, I'm keeping part of it and things like that. It was insane. It was crazy. I mean, I, I said, the guy is insane. So I told him in the beginning, look, um, it's a little bit difficult for me. <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe you want to do this on your own, not when I'm going to be here, you know. And, um, but as the, the time was, you know, progressing and the, the cases were coming beautiful and they were really nice. So 
I was hesitant for a couple of years. But uh, back in 2009, when I saw three-year cases, I said, you know, we have something here. Yeah. And uh, the cases were beautiful, really beautiful. Uh, no comparison with augmentation cases. Oh. So, uh, so I said, okay, let, let's collect the cases. Let's start to collect and publish them. So we were very careful. And you know, it was a, a private practice no, away from math, and so I could not really control everything um, like I'm doing now. Uh, so it, it was a difficulty in collecting the data, uh, bake the categories and, and everything. So, and uh, that's why it took us a lot of time to put them in order and uh, have a real data because we knew that when we publish, that every, everybody would say, oh, I want CBCT, I want PA, I want all the data. So, Kritzler came in 2010 and he published Rocket City. And um, we were very angry, sad, you know, disappointed because we were working on this four years before him. So, anyway, we published um, in 2013-14 the five-year data. And this was, uh, you know, still there is no five-year data. Only us, we have published five-year and ten-year data. And uh, retrospectively speaking, prospective, there is no study data in the market. So it's coming out. I know Pet Group has one that uh, it's coming. We have a big multi-center study with uh, root membrane that starts right now with uh, Megagen sponsoring this. And um, we are looking forward to a very fruitful future. Great. Uh, you wanted to say to you something about the history of this? Yes, or, yes. Uh, uh, there are so many uh, terms for this technique. I want to explain for our participant that there are different kind of techniques on different names. For example, socket shield or root membrane or PET, partial extract therapy. You know what I mean? This is different kind of techniques or I different think names. I got it, I got it. And, and, and this is the, the juice of the whole thing. The root membrane is a very clean type of, uh, of um, uh, surgical procedure. We drill inside the center of the tooth, we go to the apex, then we, we cut the, the tooth to a buccal and the palatal part or lingual part. Mm -hmm. Now we don't use any grafting material because we are drilling very close to the, to the buccal side of the root. So uh, the implant placement is like a millimeter from, from the root. So there's no need for us to graft. And um, this is one of the major differences that we have with the socket seal that even in the first um, article from Hulzler and later on, um, they were using um, um, uh, grafting material. Uh -huh. now, so far, nobody has say about uh, what they use, what type of material, everybody uses their own. We don't use, we never use material uh, a biomaterial to place inside of course now if somebody places an implant that is like more than two millimeters from from the root uh -huh. then you have to put something inside the gap mm -hmm. for the very simple reason that you know as you know soft tissue runs much faster than the bone yes so the soft tissue will go inside yeah. so you really have to place something there in order to penetrate, not to allow the soft tissue to penetrate inside. Mm -hmm. So actually you need to place something like a blocker. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the, the thing that we agree with the PT group. Now the PT, PT is not a technique. PT is, is an umbrella of techniques, mm -hmm. which uh, it contains inside the socket seal with membrane as implant mediated techniques. Now, there are also the techniques that they have regarding the pontic development. Yes. The pontic development, which it has um, the pontic shield, the glocker, and the root submergence. Now, the difference between the pontic shield and the glocker is the membrane. If they use the membrane, then you, know, you go for the other one. If you don't use it, you go for the other. So, these are the five major, let's say, aspects of the whole umbrella. And PET co contains everything. Uh, for us, to be honest, I have not uh, been uh, associated with the Pontic Seagull or only with the root submergence, but it's not 
a topic that I lecture on. I lecture only on the root membrane and uh, you know uh, the aspects of this. I try to be very very stable, and our data uh -huh. uh, they are very precise. Great. Yeah, I I I love it, and I I'm doing it uh, so many times. Uh, of course, based on the case, I I love it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, May you explain more about this? Do you have the slides or uh, you can, uh, do you want to share your screen or just want to talk about it? I, I don't have some right now, but we can, uh, uh, for in, in this computer, and, okay, but talk about we can it. arrange another time if you want to um, uh, have uh, something with uh, figures or something to show here. Um, Let's talk about it, okay. Yes. Uh, these are the major differences. Now, there are also some other differences between the, the different schools, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, somebody is placing the, the um, implant at the bone level. We are saying that we should place the uh, implant half, uh, uh, the, the root should be, um, other people are saying at the bone level. Other people, we are saying that the root length should be half a millimeter on, on top, uh, supracrestal because okay. of the fibers. Um, Why? So it's really um, on the school. Somebody will go 200 degrees, somebody 180 degrees. There are other schools also, like um, uh, proximal sockets in from uh, Joseph Kahn, that he's a very famous uh, uh, world class uh, researcher and a fantastic person, too. Um, what, what can I say? We will see, you know, the future will give us the, the, the recipes and the results. So far, everybody's trying, all the groups are trying to get data, more data, to work on, on, on if we are doing the things correctly. Uh, recently, we published a paper in um, 2020, in March, I think it was, where we did the three-dimensional volumetric analysis also. Uh -huh. And uh, it was incredible because after five years, we had uh, 0 0.2 um, uh, difference between when we were doing the implant placement and the uh, four or five years after that was uh, the, the data. Um, Great. To be honest, the results we have are, are impressive. Yes, I know that. And the good thing is that um, the, the same results that I see, you see them, everybody sees them all over the world. Mm -hmm. So this is something that it's uh, very fascinating and, and um, giving back to us, let's say, because you remember when, when, when I first started uh, lecturing on this globally, the, um, I had a lot of criticism. Yes. A lot. And, you know, trying to convince everyone that what you're saying is correct without having the real data. Now we have the real data. Now it's very easy. You know, now we have the histology, we have 3D, we have retrospective analysis, we have 10 year data. We have more than 440, I think, cases that we have. We have 50 cases more than 10 years. So, you know, it's, we have the data now. And yeah. not only us, other, other, other groups have also data that they're showing that, you know, this thing is working if you do it correctly. Yeah, exactly. When I, the uh, first time I uh, presented my case and the first questions the colleagues asked, what about OSI integration? <laughs> yes. What? Do you know what I mean? The first okay. question they asked, what about the OSI integration? Because implants and uh, roots and uh, there is no bone to also integrate, so how an implant can then to integrate to the root membrane, something like that. Very true, very true. But all of these uh, answers, we, we gave them, uh, um, uh, we, we, and we answered them with the histology that we, we provided. So yes. this was a successful uh, case, uh, you know, after five years, and it was a car accident. So. We were very lucky to retrieve this. But there are also from Chuck um, um, uh, Schremer, um, the histology that he provided was very good too, and um, proves that it can be also degradation. 
and the bone goes between the root and the implant thread. Also, we see some kind of cementum on the implant surface. No? No, you, you see in, in Hurzeler's uh, yeah. first uh, publication because they used endogame. Yeah. So endogame comes from, you know, enamel uh, derivative matrix. And because of this, they have this new cementum, as they called it. Um, no, no, in, in Boozer article, he mentioned that we be in kind of some kind of histologic uh, sections, we see kind of cementum on the implant surface. In which one? In the Boozer article. In Boozer's article in Baumer? Yeah. Yes, about uh, this technique. Which Boozer article? Uh, I'm not sure exactly the name, but about uh, this kind of this technique and the uh, histologic aspects. He wrote a uh, he wrote a paragraph about it. We can see cement on the uh, implant. Haven't you seen that articles? Not so much, you know. But on the other hand, uh huh. I have I have a huge respect for for Boozer, obviously because we all learn from him, and I think he's a one of the personalities and yes. uh, figures of uh, today's implant dentistry. But you know, I was not expecting something else uh -huh. you know, because for, for he's he's doing completely different thing that we are doing. Yes, so I know. This technique is a minimal invasive technique. He is doing a maximal invasive technique, you know, with, with all of this overbuilding and, you know, reentries and surgeries and membranes and bone and bone. So, you know, I understand a lot of things. And also, you know, you know well that this technique is the cheapest technique in the world because yes. there's no kind of material. There's nothing that, that you're doing because all the treasure is there, all the biology is there. You know, with anything so yeah I, I expect some cookies here but you know the, the true data says a lot it's mm -hmm. the, the most preserving the best preserving um, yeah uh, technique uh, right now we have long data we really have long data when we see what's going on with or without grafting uh, you know because even if even if you graft the, the percentage of graft that you put inside is so minimal yeah so yeah really, and you convince the body that there is also still a root there you know how you convince the body that still there is a root there to preserve the buccal bone you the don't bone. change something you are extracting part of it outside that you you're covering uh this with uh, with an implant and with the healing mm -hmm. so it's just you need to make it gently, nicely with some rules. We published also in these rules in 2015 in IJPRD. Now there are also some other rules. The other groups are publishing uh, new data, different data on the, uh, on the way that they're doing it. And then the people can follow um, the, the instructions and the guidelines and not to have the difficulty that, that um, uh, I had, or Dr. Sjorbas had, when we were developing this, and we had, we had from nowhere to get data, because everything, we were creating the data. So mm -hmm. now it's much easier, and more and more people are lecturing on this, and they're trying to, 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 to give and to enlighten uh, the dark side. But we still have a lot of future, a lot of progress to do. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm very positive for, for the future, to be honest. Yeah. And you insist on the space between implant and roots, yes? Same as we, uh, for a uh, jumping distance, something like that. When you place an immediate implant, uh, we need a space between implant and buccal bone? No, no we need a space between no, implant when, and when you, have, when you have the root there, Mm -hmm. We don't think that you need a lot of space. On the Not a lot of, but you don't attach it to the root, yes? You almost attach it. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to touch it. But you're very close to it. The, the, the PT group has a, 
a different type of socket seal, like a modified, because they're taking the socket seal to a palatal position. Uh -huh. And then they're creating a bigger graph, and they graph this. Yes, in, 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 in the way that they're doing it, yes, it works like this. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you place the, the implant away from the root, more than two millimeters, okay. for any reason, yeah. you really have to place something there. Yes. Because the root membrane doesn't work there. The root membrane, in order to work, you have to be close to the root. Mm -hmm. Okay. And right. I think this makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So uh, there is different kind of uh, kits, for example, for your technique and for PAT. No, I think both, both kits that uh, have been released from Megagen, our kit was released in 2017. Now these, they, they have a, how is... Uh, yes, uh, because of that I mentioned, yeah. But if you really see the kits, the kits are very close. They are similar, they are familiar. Okay. There are very few differences because the concept is the same. Yes. Uh, I think that the, there are two kits for other reasons. I think that both kits are very nice well designed the quality of them is uh, uh, for both kids is uh, very good mm -hmm. and um, you know I mean I prefer my kit some people prefer how is kit you can do also guide it so it's a totally different uh, point of view okay great uh, anything special you want to say about this technique more than this I think that the people uh, uh, should have a proper uh, case selection and um, start with uh, a tooth that is immobile, has no mobility at all, to um, have a good patient, a healthy patient, and also a patient that uh, they will, um, you know, the patient will give time to them to, 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 to take their time, because as you know, it's a sensitive technique, especially in the beginning. Um, I advise them to take the, the hands-on courses that uh, the people that they're lecturing or are giving because it's very helpful. And also to um, take uh, one of the kits that is inside the market. The kits are really helpful. They will, uh, they will um, solve your hands with, mm -hmm. because the birds are longer. They help you around. So um, I think that this will be much easier for all of them and also to, to to get the case that there's a plenty of bone mm -hmm. so because it, it's it's very in the beginning they might do a mistake um, one of the uh, most difficult things is to separate the two roots without creating without uh, giving uh, extra pressure to the buccal side mm -hmm. so um, they should work in the beginning like endodontists you know they should find the apex of the and they just measure it they have a um, a PA and then slowly go down to, to the apex and increase the, the diameter, cut the mesodistal cut, and then slowly take out the palatal part. They should be methodically, let's say, and uh, give time because it's something new. And slowly they will learn it. I mean, it's like every new technique that they did. Yes. When you did your first uh, lateral window, was it easy? No. Yes. So it has a learning curve. Exactly. Yeah. And what about uh, provis provisionalization? Now, the technique works, first of all, we are talking about a flapless technique. Mm -hmm. For us, 99% should be a flapless technique. Okay. You can do it in open flap too, but it's a shame because you're losing the fibers. Yes. So, and the fiber, you know, the PDL and the fiber, it's really very important because it provides all the nutrition and the blood supply and everything. Now, we are trying to do it on a, on a, a flapless mode as uh, much as possible. Yes. When you do this and you achieve to place an implant correctly inside and you have more, let's say, than 30, 35 newtons or 70 ISQ values, okay. then you should place a provisional. Mm -hmm either off occlusion or on occlusion, doesn't matter. It matters the provision to have an immobile fixed provision there. Yes. Of course, we're trying always the provision to have its crew retained mm -hmm. in the correct emergence profile. You can use any type of emergence profile you like, umbrella concept. Uh, you can use uh, uh, whatever works in your hands. 
Uh, you can use Alberto Micelli's uh, technique, you can use uh, the Vergulis and Pops technique, the VPI, Cervico. Uh, all, all of these are a great type of uh, you know, solutions to, uh, to have an extra result. Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question. Uh, this is uh, how many years you are in implant dentistry practice? Um, I placed my first implant in 2001. 2001. In okay, so 19. Same as me. Yeah, 2001. <laughs> yeah. And uh, during these uh, years, I'm sure you have you got something special, unique to you as a signature, as a as a kind of mindset or concept, or can maybe a story. Do you have something like that to to like to share with the participants about this 19 years of implant dentistry life? I think that. Um... You know, I was, um, I was surprised because I was trained, let's say, by the best in New York, you know, this Dennis Tarno is my yeah. uh, professor, and uh, also Sang Chung Cho and Nicholas Elian, um, Stephen Wallace, Bob Horowitz, um, I mean, so, so many great yeah. surgeons and pathologists. Um, but I have to say that there is always somebody better and better and better. You should never compare yourself with somebody else because things that they work in your hands, they don't work in somebody else's hands. Yes. I have developed my own freestyle, let's say, of, of placing it. Today, I had a very difficult case, you know, very, very difficult case. Most of the people could, could have avoided this. Some other people, would have not placed implants and agree immediate placement and grafting the same, same way. Some people would do GBR. It's really on what works better on you. Mm -hmm. And life will, will show you, you will indicate what works better in your hands. Mm -hmm. Somebody is better in GBR, somebody is better in drilling. Somebody's hand is more accurate or lighter than somebody else. I have seen great, you know, people that they're doing fantastic things with the uh, soft tissue, let's say. Yeah. And when, they, when it comes to place implants, their implant placement sucks. <laughs> yeah. Other people that, you know, they're, they're really good with the bone and the way they handle the drills and the, the affinity and the relationship that they have between bone, implant, and their hands and the mind that you say, it's impossible to place an implant there. And they place it. Mm -hmm. And they get initial stability also and say, you know, I placed it, now I will graph it and it's done. So yeah. also the implant plays a big role, you know, what type of implant you're using. And also if you are able to have a success with such implant. Mm -hmm. Nowadays we have implants that are much better than before, like any ridge and any type of, uh, some other type of uh, implants. I use only any reads because in my hands, this works everywhere. Yeah. Just you know how to use it. You know, it's like yeah. a Ferrari. If, if you don't know how to drive a Ferrari, then, you know, <laughs> it doesn't work well. Exactly. Yes, you should know your system very well. And uh, yeah, when you know it exactly, you can face with many uh, situations and complications because you have, you, you trust it, you know it exactly. Yeah, you should know your system very well. Very true. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, when you uh, talked about uh, running and marathon, yes. uh, one, uh, one question came up to my mind. Uh, what happens next in this situation? You cannot uh, do a race. No, in this situation, with kind of social distancing, you cannot do that. Yes, what happened? 
I think that, uh, you know, marathon is the loneliest uh, sports <laughs> existing, you know, because you run alone for, for hours and hours and hours. No, so, I mean for a competition or as a uh, tournament, I mean. It's a marathon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're right. You know, I was ready to, to do London Marathon on April, mm -hmm. end of April. So I was tremendously disappointed that I couldn't do the London Marathon. Now they postponed it to uh, September. I don't know. Yesterday I heard that this might not happen again. So it, it is a disappointment. So now we have no, no goal, let's say. Yeah. No something, you know, to, to, to stimulate us. But um, it's okay. We, we're still doing it, uh, you know, we, we have the kilometers, we decrease the kilometers. We don't run these um, um, extensive, let's say, long runs every Sunday. Uh, they're very, very tiring. And we're focusing more on the speed. Yes. So this is all, all the marathon runners, they, that's what they do. Instead of running, let's speed say... Speed and stamina, yeah? Speed and stamina. Oh, yes. 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 Or instead of, you know, trying to do 25, 30 kilometers every Sunday, you stop at 18, 17, maximum 20. Oh. Um, and uh, you're working more on your, um, you know, 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers. For example, if I was doing one hour, let's say, the 10 kilometers, now I'm trying to decrease it, take it down to 55, 54, 53 minutes, let's say. This would make you a faster runner in general. So that's what I'm doing, for example. Today I did my personal best in five kilometers. So I will try more next week, next week. So next week. Gives you a goal, yeah. gives you something to, to work on. Fantastic. Very nice. Okay. Thank you so much, Miltiades. Thank you for your time. Do we want to say anything more? I want to, to say that um, to everyone to keep on trying and uh, to don't, don't be afraid to do root embryo technique or socket seal or any kind of different aspect on this. Uh, the, I'm here for everyone, whoever wants to email me or ask me uh, something, please do not hesitate to, to contact me. And um, the root membrane group, because we do have a group right now, uh, it's a lot of people all, all around the world that we're doing uh, um, this um, kind of uh, studies and also magazine supporting and you can ask uh, um, a lot of uh, different information, whatever you want. MINEC is here, the global organization for magazine uh, uh, to yeah. the network to give uh, education and uh, what, to whatever you want, they will return back uh, the question. And um, I think, as I told you, that the future is there. Yeah. And um, we are looking for more and more data from, from, from everywhere. I'm very positive, and I really would like to thank you again for this wonderful interview. Thank you. Thank you very much for accepting my invitation. Uh, it was my pleasure and my uh, pleasure my my right to be with you and with uh, our followers and participants in Instagram zoom and facebook and i recorded this and I put it in one piece uh, they can watch it later because i know there are so many webinars these days and overshadowing each other so they can uh, watch it later and i hope they enjoy it thank you so much the best. Bye -bye. Stay safe say hi you too. Um, Looking forward to seeing you again. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Sure. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.